I heard uh, that the Taproot soft fork is going to allow for more like smart contract functionality um, in Bitcoin. Does that impact Stacks at all with it being its own chain? Are you guys going to be able to leverage any of uh, those those new smart contracting abilities through Taproot? So the Taproot update, we also have a blog post that goes in more technical detail on this. Um, I would refer you there because again, I have our blockchain engineers go into the specifics. So at the high level, uh, Taproot is great. Taproot's great for Bitcoin. It brings more utility, but it's in no way able to take on any sort of like large capacity of smart contracts. Like you wouldn't, you know, want to go like mint new NFTs there and try and sell and transact or even doing like large loans. Um, the Bitcoin chain is not meant to have like a ton of like transactions. Like they're not worried about transactions per second or some of these scaling solutions. So um, more functionality is great, but it's still very, very minor in terms of like adding utility to Bitcoin. So you still would need something to offload a bunch of the actual um, compute off of the Bitcoin chain, which is where Stacks is an option to do that. One of but the yeah, we, I... um, you know, at the Stacks Foundation, we believe in like the development of the Bitcoin chain. And there's actually this really nice symbiotic relationship that we actually have funded um, some Bitcoin core developers as well. Because like any upgrades to the Bitcoin chain are great for our chain. They're great for the ecosystem. So I think continuing to support any developments like that is a win for everyone in the ecosystem. Uh, now that you brought up the Stacks Foundation, like what do you guys do at the Stacks Foundation? Yeah, so like our focus is on kind of the three pillars of growing the ecosystem. Um, so supporting the open source blockchain. So helping make sure that new improvements, uh, we help uh, facilitate the governance process of uh, stacks improvement proposals, our SIPs program. Um, we educate, so helping people understand how does the technology work, why is it important, um, how you can get started with it, including things like clarity. So how do you use the programming language? And then the third thing is grants. So we have a hundred million stacks treasury that we started with, and our goal is to deploy all of that into people building in the ecosystem. So building utility, um, everything from, yeah, funding Bitcoin core developers, because that's like a core component of our chain, as well as people building small smart contracts or building new infrastructure. We have like a number of bridges being built right now. I think one of them came through a grant. Uh, we have new DeFi uh, protocols on top. Those again, started off as grants, went through things like the Stacks Accelerator, so really, it's just a place that we're here to support the ecosystem and help it grow and thrive uh, by spending that money on builders contributing. What about privacy on Stacks? I'm not really familiar with Stacks. What about privacy on Stacks? Is there any form of privacy on Stacks? If there isn't, are there, you know, are there you know, proposals to improve privacy on Stacks? This is a big yeah, deal. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, ours is similar to most of the top blockchains where uh, it's very transparent. Like you can see transactions, you can see what's going on. So um, we don't have something like Monero where you're kind of um, able to like easily obscure the transactions or the people doing the transactions. We don't have the functionality. Um, instead, we do think a lot about like identity. That's been like a core thesis of Stacks from the beginning is how can people control you know, pieces of their identity. And I think if you want to have like a synonymous <laughs> relationship to the chain, you would be able to do that. Um, you could set that up. You could have different stacks IDs. Uh, you know, you could have your own like dot BTC name instead of dot ETH name. Um, obviously getting into that point would require you to, to figure out if you wanted to stay anonymous, how to get into that. But once you're on there, um, you know, the goal is to be able to support people to represent their data online the way that they want to and have full control over it and not um, have to like worry about like a third party uh, tampering with it. So keeping it secure. But yeah, that's that's a that's different than like something like Monero. I'm assuming that's what you had in mind. For there's several projects like RGB and Synonym that are working on tokenization over lightning. Um, how mm -hmm. would that impact stacks? That's a great question. I haven't like gone deeper on those two in particular. Uh, you know, I think, you know, from, let me think 2018, we had like a big summit. We had Elizabeth Stark there. We had a number of talks on lightning. I think it's a great, great feature for Bitcoin. I think it provides like a lot of rapid utility in terms of transactions. 
Um, so I, I see stacks as complementary to lightning, um, but I do see that lightning is like very limited in kind of what it can do. Um, I think we actually have a grant open right now that's looking, um, it's a designer who's looking to improve the UI of Bitcoin transactions, including things like lightning. And so I think even at the Stacks Foundation, it doesn't have anything to do with Stacks, but I think helping people understand that component of Bitcoin is really important. So we're looking to fund that type of research and hopefully get that out there. Especially when you think of things like in El Salvador, there's an incredible adoption of, of Bitcoin. I think that's a great place for lightning transactions. I don't think that's a great place for using smart, uh, Stacks smart contracts to exchange Bitcoin um, and like, you know, in small settings. Um, instead, you could think about maybe in El Salvador, you have a wallet of Bitcoin that you're using, but you want to participate in DeFi primitives like lending or borrowing. Um, you could use the Stacks chain with your native Bitcoin to do that instead of having to trust like a third party custody provider. Um, and then maybe on your day-to-day -day transactions, you're using something like Lightning with your Bitcoin. I remember you mentioned um, um, Stacks is all about unlocking the, the, the value in Bitcoin and you compared it to Ethereum and other smart contracts platform. And when I think about smart contract platform, I think of gambling, basically, you know, people go to Uniswap, you know, exchange, exchange shitcoin for the next shitcoin, DeFi farming and all that buzzwords. And um, I'd like to know for someone who might you know, be interested in saying, okay, I want to give Stacks, you know, a try. What does Stacks have, you know, have to offer as a stance? What are the most promising projects coming out of the Stack ecosystem? Yeah, I think, um, well, in some ways we've maybe benefited by being not EVM compatible because a lot of the people, you know, a lot of other chains, they, they suffer from this project, like people swarm in, there's a bunch of spammy, scammy stuff, a bunch of people drive up the price and then they leave to the next chain. Um, so I think because it's like, it's a little harder to operate between our chain and others right now. Um, and then right now we don't sort of have that problem, but I get, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think if like you have stacks today, some of the things people are doing are one, the simplest is just stacking. So you're like, okay, well, I want to buy some stacks. Um, I don't know how I want to use them yet. You can participate in stacking by locking your stacks tokens and earn a Bitcoin yield. So that's, like I said, a 10% yield. If you don't meet the threshold of 100,000 stacks or above, you can pool with other people. Um, there's a number of exchanges that now make this easy. So like OKCoin, um, Binance just supported it, uh, BitGo. And then there's some community pools like Friedger Pool where you can pool your stacks with them and you can lock them as long as you like. You can either do a two week cycle or up to uh, six months. And so that's like a very passive way to get involved um, and earn Bitcoin, which people really like. <laughs> um, so that's one. I think like if you want to get more involved than that, there's some DeFi primitives. So Arcadico is one of those. So if you're familiar with something like a MakerDAO, where you're able to borrow and lend, um, Arcadico is the platform right now that's kind of the leading thing on Stacks, where you can lock your Stacks tokens, you can um, swap them for the stable coin, you can use them in loans. Um, they have this idea of a self-repaying loan. Because if you take out a loan, they're holding your Stacks tokens and that Bitcoin yield on those Stacks tokens can actually go against the interest and the principal that you earn. So like, what if you took out a loan and you never actually repaid the principal, you just held it there because of stacking, you could repay it. So that's kind of the mentality there. Um, there's also tons of NFTs. I think this is like, you know, last year was the year of NFTs. So you can go to like stxnft.com or Byzantian. Um, all of these marketplaces exist where you can use uh, Stacks tokens to like mint NFTs, buy NFTs, trade NFTs. I think there's obviously a lot of excitement um, around that. Uh, so we, you know, we have similar things as those smart contracts. And then there are some new like DEXs that are launching um, like StackSwap. Um, Alex is like the other one, alex.btc. Uh, you can look it up uh, on Twitter or on their website and they're another uh, DeFi primitive. So they like allow lending and some of these more advanced DeFi pieces. Something that um, is interesting to me is obviously what you said earlier about like um, wanting to be involved in a project that's making a difference in the cryptocurrency landscape and and kind of uh having a reason i guess and a difference to make uh, so when it comes to stacks there's obviously a lot of uh things you can do like the smart contract capabilities and the nfts etc what for you is the 
the biggest kind of or the main problem that is being solved by stacks uh what is your kind of why i guess around like okay well this is you know I, we are solving this issue uh in the world and that's why i think you know i, I want to be here and why i'm enjoying working here what, what what is that for you yeah yeah i think that vision like expands to like the wider web three so i may um I believe in the multi-chain world. Obviously, just having stacks and Bitcoin alone are two chains. But you know, I'm I'm very familiar with a number of the other chains. I've you know I've spent a lot of time um, in the multi-chain universe, and so I don't think it's just stacks. But I do think that there is this. You know, I believe that there's a vision that there's a lot of power that happens when you can allow people to contribute to things they care about um, and make changes. And I think to me, I'm very optimistic that we can have like an impact on like, how do we think about um, the climate? How do we think about solving energy problems when there's a lot more people and a lot more capital that's accessible to work on those things in collaboration. So that's like sort of my utopian future. I think like, yeah, we could like get together and help, you know, change uh, policies or fund big audacious ideas uh, with groups of people who now have access to like their financial assets in a different way. So it's kind of like my long view, but I think a good example of this is the Miami coin. Like this was something that, you know, an independent team conceived this idea, they built this idea. And in the past you know, like eight months, they've been able to make it happen. They said like, we think that the residents of Miami want to have a say in how things are going in their city. So we want to create this city coin model built on top of stacks where people can hold Miami tokens. And those tokens represent like your, you know, sort of investment in the city, whether you live there or not, doesn't matter. But if you're holding those tokens, you know that 30% of the yield from mining is going into a wallet that the city of Miami gets to control. So with that, that's kind of like audacious, but then they actually got the mayor involved and interested. So the mayor went through the legislative process to be able to accept this wallet on behalf of the city. And so already, I think they've raised about $30 million in Bitcoin in that wallet. They actually went ahead and signed 5.25 million of that wallet towards low income housing. So basically further subsidizing some subsidies that were gonna end for individuals in Miami. Now 5 million of that is going from this wallet that didn't exist before. And to me, that's like, super cool that like people are able to have a direct impact in a city by working across this like collaborative group of people having like audacious ideas and then getting the right like decision makers to like make an impact so to me i think you could think about that in a in a larger scale like wow wouldn't it be great if there's like a, a cleaner energy plant created instead of like a dirtier one like how could people come together to think about the funding and the legislative and the um capital intensity in order to like make that happen. But if you get enough people who feel like they're invested in it and they actually have some say in what's gonna happen, then maybe it's like possible. So that's that's where I'm excited about it. Obviously when it comes down to just like smart contracts, being able to trade value, it doesn't feel like those two things connect. But I think that City Coins example is like super fascinating. And we've seen such excitement that now there's like a New York City coin um, there's an Austin city coin coming. Like there's a bunch of people who are just excited about this. Obviously who doesn't love like a big wallet full of money <laughs> for them to do stuff, but to actually take the risk and listen to what people are saying about what they want in their city and taking action against it. Like that's, that's like the hypothesis that's like coming true. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I like it. So it's kind of like, um, yeah, with that, there's, there's kind of bringing elements of decentralization to like funding of a centralized uh, thing, I guess. So like when it comes to the city, yeah, okay, it's going to be going to the mayor, but the mayor is agreeing to do what the people are voting for. So obviously there's still some reliance on centralization, but like that's kind of, you know, um, to be expected, I suppose, at this point in time. Okay, I get you. Um, I guess like one of the things, I guess coming into the centralization, decentralization aspect, one of the things that's always been a bit of a gripe for me with Ethereum was that there was this huge pre-mine and and kind of some shiftiness uh, around the initial creation of the token. Like when it comes to stacks, like because obviously you guys have a token, right? And I know that's something that 
um, Bitcoin maximalists can get upset by. Um, so what, when it comes to the token, like how was that in the first place? Like how was that created? Like, was there some uh, pre-mine like distribution? Like how, how did that all happen? Cause I'm not super familiar with the history there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very familiar with history, so I'm happy to weigh in. And actually, yeah, I've, um, if you want the full detailed history, we actually had to do, and we did our SEC filing to go through every um, portion of our token distribution. Uh, it's 121 pages. I have read all of them multiple times because <laughs> we had multiple edits and it goes into every single detail of where the tokens went, who they belong to, how many they have. So I think we're maybe one of two projects that have gone that thoroughly to say like we want to be as transparent as possible so um originally one name raised venture capital from usv who's an investor there um, they had an equity base they decided to do a token sale in 2017 at the time there was no way to offer it to non-accredited investors in the us so like anyone could participate but if you weren't accredited you couldn't they realized like that was a problem because most developers weren't accredited, people didn't have this kind of certification. So what they did is they said, okay, anyone who wants to participate, but can't because they're not accredited, we're gonna give you a voucher up to $3,000 at today's price. So that was a 12 cent price. And they said, okay, we're gonna find a way to be able to offer you guys tokens at this price. So basically it spent the next two years working through the regulatory in order to um, do a regulated offering, qualified by the SEC. So that was the Reg A in 2019. Um, so I joined just before that to help them do this. And that process, we were able to open it up to everyone. Now, if you had the original um, voucher, it meant that you could have the 12 cent price up to $3,000 worth. Uh, but anyone could buy um, at the new price, which was 30 cents. Um, so if you didn't have a voucher, you could just get it at the 30 cent price. And so both of those funding rounds were sales of the Genesis block. So basically making it as easy and as accessible as possible to folks. So a majority of the Genesis block got sold through that. Um, there were some early investors who had a portion of the tokens allocated to them because of their early investment. Um, and then like, you know, there's some team um, as well. And then there's some treasuries put aside. So the Stacks Foundation has a hundred million dollars or 100 million stacks out of that initial treasury that was put aside towards community treasury. There's a number of other treasury tokens that were given um, to a various uh, ecosystems. Some of them are still locked. Um, so the goal was to be as fair as possible, to put very long lockups on people. So most people who participate in the first sale had like a at least a two-year lockup. Some of them had up to an eight-year lockup if they were a larger fund. Um, same with the 2017 or 2019, people had a two-year lockup. So the goal was like to try and make it fair and and um, make sure people kept skin in the game even as the project launched. Uh, but yeah, we have a full token white paper as well that can go into detail. But I think the key is like the goal was to be as fair and as transparent as possible and to get tokens in the hands of builders um, and then also allow for new stacks tokens to be mined. So people who come in today can still get access to brand new stacks tokens by participating in mining, which like I said, you don't need advanced hardware, you just need Bitcoin to participate. Is the stacks ecosystem like kind of self-contained or is there a way to send um, stacks tokens to other blockchains or, or other Bitcoin tokenization platforms like Liquid or RSK? Like is, yeah, is there so a way to atomic swap or something? Yeah, so atomic swaps um, exist. This is something that like a community member built and you can see the code on GitHub, um, so it's live. You can also use what they call catamaran swaps, um, also on the Bitcoin chain. Um, and then there's four bridges that now exist or are being built uh, in the Stacks ecosystem. The first one is the Sato uh, Satoshables bridge. They basically bridged between Ethereum NFTs to um, Stacks NFTs. So they were able to bring those um, NFTs across. There's the Magic Bridge. Um, there's uh, Damon launched its bridge called All Bridge, <laughs> and then there's there's a fourth bridge as well, which I'm like now just blanking the name. I have to look at my notes. But there are bridges because people are thinking about that, or there are the atomic swaps. So if you want to keep things on Bitcoin, you can just use um, atomic swaps as well. So if you want to build anything in this area, though, we have grants. <laughs> 
sorry there's, there's a lag on my side i was just i was wishing i was a developer so i could go get a grant and start making some stuff but uh, yeah, it's not well, my can, area of you expertise you could get a grant by too just like maybe playing around with you know tools we have um someone got a grant because they wanted to educate the Polish community about sex. So they just, you know, it was like a, maybe a few hundred dollars. They made some video content. They did some educational tools and made it. So you don't have to be a de developer to get a grant. Uh, there's lots of ways to contribute besides just. And how many projects are you guys currently funding uh, through your grant program? Um, last year, we, I think we did a half a million in grant funding. I think in this quarter already, we've, um, we've granted around 400k so we're like on track to like almost double our last year just in this quarter um which is great and people are building all sorts of uh, uh people are building stuff with stacks they're like i said doing research projects um, around design i think that's like very needed uh, we also have things called stacks chapters where we have geographic chapters where people are hosting events they're um creating content they're you know supporting local uh, development of the SACS ecosystem as well. So like that's another big program that's been pretty successful.